Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures if you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be. But you don't know where to begin. You have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any, any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 32 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side, 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about our true skin health products, the longevity products, formulations, ingredients, something you may have heard about or read about, if you have a health challenge you or a loved one wants help with, 844-236-6010 is our number. And likewise, if you have a success story you'd like to share, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, please go to my websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can order longevity products right off the websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off our websites or call 866-735-2470 if you want to talk to a real person, 866-735-2470. For a one-time $25 fee, you can start a business. You can be in business for yourself, earn as much or as little money as you like, working out of your home, writing off your home office, or if you just want to get your products at the wholesale price for a one-time $25 fee, you can join the Brightside Ben team and begin the life of an entrepreneur or just get, or just get your products at the wholesale price for a one-time $25 fee. Call 866-735-2470 or hit the Join the Team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. All right, welcome back to the Bright Side. I want to finish up talking about our uh, omega-7s, our long-chain fatty acids, the omega-7 fatty acids, and... Uh, and sea buckthorn oil, we were talking about sea buckthorn oil on our last program, which is one of nature's best sources of omega-7. It's got more than omega-7s in it, but the omega-7s make it a really interesting fat-burning nutritional supplement and also very important for diabetics. Omega-7s have fat-burning properties, anti-diabetic properties. They help lower blood fats. They can reduce body fat. They can be used as an appetite suppressant. And they can improve blood lipid profiles, blood triglyceride profiles. You can get sea buckthorn oil on the internet. Lots of, uh, lots of companies are selling sea buckthorn oil supplements. You can use sea buckthorn tea. The oil is really where all the good stuff is. The leaves contain some uh, minerals as well as antioxidants, but the oil is loaded, just loaded with uh, polyphenols. We've talked about polyphenols in the past. They're probably the most powerful, or at least the most abundant of the phytonutrients. Uh, there's actually some salicylic acid in the oil, so you can use uh, sea buckthorn oil cos- cosmetically, and it is actually being used as a cosmeceutical oil. Many of the uh, many of the active ingredients that are in sea buckthorn oil can be used to help anti-age the skin and protect the skin. Loaded, just loaded with all kinds of sun protective bioflavonoids. It's got sterols, phytosterols. It's got that beta cytosterol for prostate for, uh, for helping guys with the, with uh, BPH or uh, male pros- male benign prostatic hypertrophy, BPH. It's also got all kinds of vitamin E in it. All the different forms of vitamin E are in uh, sea buckthorn oil. It's got pot- uh, potassium, magnesium, calcium, not so much in the oil, but in the leaves. Um, iron, zinc, manganese, copper. It's just an amazing, amazing plant, the sea buckthorn plant. The fruit itself is a great source of vitamin C. 
there's uh, more vitamin C in the sea buckthorn berry than there is an, uh, an equivalent amount of oranges or an equivalent, equivalent amount of kiwis, which are typically uh, known as uh, the best sources of vitamin C. The bee complex, just an amazing, amazing f fruit and plant and leaf and oil. Here's another really cool, uh, interesting tidbit about sea buckthorn oil, or actually about the omega-7s that are in sea buckthorn oil. As it turns out, palmitoleic acid, which is the omega-7 fatty acid, is broken down into a chemical called nonanol. You probably haven't heard of nonanol, but I bet you smelled it, because nonanol has a really characteristic odor. It's found in the skin, nonanol, and as we age and omega-7 breaks down, Known in all levels increase as we age the fatty acids in our skin break down and known in all levels will increase as the omega-7 breaks down and the interesting thing about known in all uh, it has this very interesting and unusual odor it smells just like a nursing home it smells just like old people in fact it's called old people smell known in all if you've ever smelt a, if you've ever gone into a nursing home and there's a characteristic odor in a nursing home or you smell an older person elderly person uh, there has a characteristic odor. It's a real thing. Old people smell. And cosmetic companies are actually studying known and all. They're studying how to uh, develop products that can deactivate or, or neutralize known and all. Old people smell. The Japanese have uh, an age-centric culture, and they honor the elderly. And there's lots of uh, older folks living in, uh, not in nursing homes, but living in, in, uh, with families. And the Japanese cosmetic companies are especially interested in known and all neutralization. That is, uh, neutralizing the known and all smell. Actually, there's actually even a Japanese word for the smell, uh, for that characteristic smell, called kerishu, kerishu which is... Uh, can be uh, translated as the smell of gaining years. Japanese being very creative that way. Kerry Shu'u. There's a cosmetic company called uh, uh, Mirau, Mirau Clinical. I think that's how you say it. And they're coming up with a, a whole line of products that use persimmon extract, which is a natural deodorizer against known all, according to scientists at Mirau Clinical. There are chemicals in the persimmon fruit that dissolves the known and all, just like lemon juice dissolves uh, fatty acid, rancid fatty acids from fish. Miro Clinical sells body washes with persimmon and soaps with persimmon. There's another cosmetic company that has a uh, Japanese cosmetic company that has a perfume that deodorizes known and all. Just an interesting little tidbit about omega-7s and palmitoleic acid. Palmitoleic acid, like all fats, when it breaks down, has a certain characteristic odor. If you're using uh, skincare products with vegetable oil in it, you should know that the vegetable oils, whether you're talking sunflower oil or safflower oil or corn oil, the, if you're using a straight oil or if you're using a skincare product that contains a straight oil, uh, you're probably using an oil that has been uh, processed or is already rancid. In fact, food-grade oils or cosmetic grade oils, I should say, are a degraded form of oil. A cosmetic companies buy oils from oil companies when they can no longer be sold as, as food grade. They, they're sold as cosmetic grade oils. And cosmetic grade vegetable oils are a degraded form of vegetable oil. They're already rancid. Or they're, if they're not rancid, they've been heavily processed. Which is why I never use vegetable oils in any of my formulations, and I don't recommend anybody puts vegetable oils straight, uh, vegetable oils in a skincare product on their skin, or for that matter, any oils on their skin. That's why I don't formulate with oils. There's really no need for oils on the skin. They're just a way of, uh, of creating a sort of uh, a frictionless, frictionless feel so people think they're moisturized. We've, con we've gone over this whole idea of softening the skin versus moisturizing the skin. There's no real way to moisturize the skin topically. That doesn't happen. You can soften the skin topically, but moisturizing Moisture is moisture. Moisture is water. And uh, if you put water straight on top of your skin, you're not going to help your skin any. In fact, if you put too much water on your skin, you can actually end up with a, a nasty wound on the skin. Try sticking your hand in water for three or four hours. See how good that feels. So moisturizers are typically based in oils, and oils don't do your skin any good. Use vitamin C, use fat-soluble vitamin C, use fat-soluble vitamins, and most importantly, make sure you're eating oils, or make sure you're eating fats, I should say, especially coconut oil and butter, which are probably your two most important or your two most healthful dietary fats. All right, that's all I'm going to say about long-chain fatty acids, at least for now. Um, we spent a lot of time talking about it. I want to talk about the most interesting, what I think are the most interesting of the fatty acids, and we'll do that. Uh, we'll spend a few days on that, and we'll start when we come back from our break. I'm pharmacist Ben, 844-236. 6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We will return right after this. Okay, we are back. 
back on the bright side. I'm Farm Spen. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com with a search engine up on both pages. And thank you to Peter in the UK for setting up benfuchsarchives.com. That's a compilation website with all my other websites. You can also purchase Longevity products at brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. And you can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the websites as well. Just click on the Join the Team link if you want to start a business or if you just want to get your products at the wholesale price. Or you can call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. Also, I'd like to remind you to please check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, our new Truth Hyaluronic Honey Cleanser and our Peppermint Salicylic Cleanser are up. We have our Connective Tissue Repair Comp, a Collagen Repair Complex up as well, and also our Blemish Repair Complex should be up hopefully next week, uh, the week of the 13th or maybe the week after, uh, but real soon. I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for that to come out. We just we had a big run on it. I didn't expect it to happen, and we sold out, and uh, hopefully it'll be out here in the next uh, next week or two. All right, so I want to, well, I, before we go on continuing, talk, continuing talking about the uh, short fatty acids, I just want to mention that as far as persimmon goes for the uh, known and all smell, you can, get, you can get persimmon spray and persimmon soap and persimmon candles and various persimmon fragrance products off the Internet pretty regularly if you want to get rid of that known and all smell, the rancid smell, a rancid omega-7 smell, and it is a real thing. Uh, I've worked in many nursing homes, and there is a characteristic odor, and that characteristic odor is actually, it's actually a real thing. It's uh, rancid fats, uh, rancid skin fats, and persimmon has been shown to neutralize those rancid skin fats. Just get on the internet, and if you're interested anyway, get, get on the internet and get a persimmon candle or persimmon spray, uh, and you can also use persimmon soap as well. All right, so we, there's three chains, there's three sizes of fats, long, short, and medium. We spent a lot of time talking about the long ones. We've also spent a lot of time talking about the medium ones. I, I'm very fascinated with the medium ones. The MCTs are high energy compounds that the body uses very quickly. And because the body uses them so quickly, they're not stored. So you can get all the energy benefits of fat, fat being the most energy dense of all the nutrients. You get all the energy benefits of fat when you use MCTs without having to deal with the downside of fat storage. Or if you have fat malabsorption issues, or if you had a gallbladder removed, or you have fatty liver disease, or intestinal problems, MCTs are much easier for the body to deal with than ordinary fats. I've talked often about when I worked at uh, pediatrics intensive care at University Hospital in Colorado in Denver, we used to use MCT oils in a daily dose for kids who had intestinal disorders, or who had celiac disease, or who had gallbladder problems. And I remember when I was... Um, Back in my weightlifting days, we used to use MCTs when we wanted to take advantage of the energy of fat without having to eat it. You, used to, uh, you could swig from a bottle of MCTs and get energy quickly without having to worry about uh, gaining weight. MCTs are also used in skincare. I use them in my skincare products because they've got transdermal properties. I use MCTs in my Truth Retinol 5% gel and my Truth Retinol 1% gel, which you can get on uh, by checking out truthtreatments.com. Retinol and MCTs work really well together because the MCTs act as a transdermal penetrant. And of course, I got vitamin C in there too, so the vitamin C penetrates as well. Skincare, it's not just what you're putting on your skin, it's what penetrates. And transdermal penetrating aids, fatty acids in general, are transdermal penetrating aids, but MCTs are especially transdermal because they're kind of water soluble and kind of fat soluble. And anytime you've got a sort of fat and water soluble nature in one molecule, both together in one molecule, you get some interesting transdermal properties. We're going to talk about that here in a second when we talk about short chain fatty acids. MCTs are also naturally skin softening. People will use coconut oil for their for its softening property, but they'll think it's moisturizing. There's no moisturization that occurs with coconut oil because it's oil, and oil and water don't mix. So it's the exact opposite of moisturization, but what you will get is skin softening properties, particularly because it's so rich in MCTs. Coconut oil, the MCTs in coconut oil are why, why you will see coconut oil or hear, hear about coconut oil recommended as a makeup remover or even as a cleanser. I've recommended coconut oil as a cleanser for years, and it's largely because of its MCT content. So. MCT is really valuable, really uh, versatile, lots of things you could do with MCTs. They're also very ketogenic. This is why coconut oil is ideal for the ketogenic diet. MCTs can get turned into ketones very readily. So uh, coconut oil and MCTs, and by the way, there's MCTs in butter. There's MC MCTs also in palm oil, although coconut oil is probably the easiest ways to get a large concentration of MCTs. 
Now I want to talk about what I consider to be the most fascinating of the fats, and that's the little teeny ones, the so-called short-chain fatty acids or short fatty acids. There's three of these SCFAs, short-chain fatty acids, and each one has its own interesting personality and characteristics. The most commonly used short-chain fatty acid is the active ingredient in apple cider vinegar. And if you go online and look up uh, apple cider vinegar, you're going to see all kinds of websites that talk about the surprising uses of apple cider vinegar, 80 ways you can use apple cider vinegar, 30 ways you could use apple cider vinegar. You can use apple cider vinegar to help you feel full. You can use apple cider vinegar to preserve your food. You can use apple cider vinegar as a deodorizer. You can use apple cider vinegar to lower your risk of cancer. You can use apple cider vinegar to soothe your sore throat. You can use apple cider vinegar as a marinade to wash fruits and vegetables to clean your dentures. You can use it in a bath. You can use it as a dandruff treatment. When I, uh, I have a gal who cleans my uh, office once a week and uh, every, when she's done cleaning, I walk in the, I walk into my office and it smells just like vinegar because apple cider vinegar is an amazing non-toxic and gentle cleanser. So what is it about apple cider vinegar that accounts for all these wonderful benefits, particularly when it comes to health, internal health, particularly when it comes to lowering blood sugar and helping the body work with fats? What do you think it is? Well, it's nothing more than a short chain fatty acid, a short fatty acid that's called acetic acid, A-C-E-T-I-C. -E I, I know you've heard of it because I've been talking about it for years on this program. So unless you're, if you're new to the program, you may not have heard me talk about it, but I talk about it all the time. Acetic acid, which is a, a short chain fatty acid, is a powerful, powerful healing and versatile functional molecule. It's got all kinds of benefits. Now, as I say, you, all you got to do is get on the internet, look up apple cider vinegar, and you'll see apple cider vinegar for weight loss and blood sugar control and better digestion and all kinds of benefits, more energy, all kinds of health benefits. To understand the importance or how apple cider vinegar works or how acetic acid works, we got to understand the major dis a major distinction in chemistry, and that is the distinction between water-soluble chemicals or molecules and fat-soluble molecules. That is, the major distinction that we make in chemistry or among chemicals is what they dissolve in. If they dissolve in water, we say they're water-soluble or technically hydrophilic, which means water-loving. And if they dissolve in fat, we say the molecules or the chemicals are fat-loving, i.e. lipophilic. Acetic acid, like the other short-chain fatty acid, derives many of its benefits because it is not hydrophilic, it's not lipophilic, but it's amphiphilic. Amphiphilic means it's both hydrophilic and lipophilic, and this is quite fascinating and makes the molecule quite functional. It dissolves in fat, and it, does, it dissolves in water. This is why it makes a great cleanser, because uh, oil and dirt, or I should say dirt and grime, tend to be in the oil part, in the oil phase, we say, and the oil part of acetic acid can help dissolve, because like dissolves like, it can help dissolve the oil. And then the watery nature makes the acetic acid and the grime easy to wipe off. So it makes it a perfect cleanser. And the fact that it's amphiphilic is also why it has such tremendous health benefits, which we will be talking about in the coming days as we continue discussing fats, specifically short chain fatty acids. And there's three of them. They all are very interesting. And we'll continue uh, our discussion in the coming episodes of The Bright Side. We'll come back with your phone calls, 844-236-6010. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. Back on the bright side, I'm Pharmacist Ben. Hey, four four two three six sixty ten is our number. We've got lines open for you, and we will get your calls here momentarily. We'll also, want to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products. We got free shipping for uh, the next uh, probably eight hours or so. I think uh, we, had, we ran a free shipping special, a twenty four hour free shipping special that began at four o'clock yesterday afternoon. So what are we at here? Probably another seven hours or so. Uh, we'll be. Uh, Six and a half hours, I guess. We have free shipping, so if you want to order our Truth Treatments, any of our Truth Treatment products, you'll get free shipping. Go to truthtreatments.com. Check out our Truth Skin Health products, our Truth Biomimetic Mineral Mist made with plant-derived fulvic minerals, electro electrified fulvic minerals, as well as amino acids and, and vitamins. Our Truth Hyaluronic Honey Cleanser, Truth Peppermint Salicylic Cleanser, our Truth Retinol 5% and Truth Retinol 1% gels, and our Truth Transdermal C Serum and Truth Transdermal C Balm, or, and our Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream are all up at truthtreatments.com. Free shipping until around 4 o'clock Mountain Standard Time today. 
So you want to check that out, truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. And don't forget to check out our longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com, or you can call 866-735-2470. If you want to order from a real live human being, got lines open 844-236-6010. We'll read a couple stories and then we'll get your phone calls from JAMA, Journal of the American Medical Association. Dietary factors associated with substantial proportion of deaths from heart disease, stroke, and disease. Nearly half of all deaths due to heart disease, stroke, and type 2 diabetes in the United States were associated with suboptimal consumption of certain dietary factors, according to a study that uh, showed up in the March 7th issue of JAMA. Dietary habits influence many risk factors for cardiometabolic health, including heart disease, stroke, and type 2, di di type 2 diabetes, which collectively pose substantial health and economic burdens. Well, surprise, surprise. At least uh, now the mainstream is, is getting hip to the fact that uh, you got to supplement. Not getting enough dietary factors is not only a question of not eating correctly, it's also a question of the dietary factors not being in the food. I've said this before, I'll say it again. I hate the fact that we have to supplement. I wish we could get everything we need from food. And I'll hear people say every once in a while, oh, I don't supplement, I just eat food and I just eat well. Well, you know what? Good luck. Because from the soils upward, from the soil to food processing to shipping and storage and freezing and thawing and boiling and all the ways that we uh, take care of or, or don't take care of our food, and not to mention GMOs, not to mention uh, uh, genetic modification that's not GMO modification, but just the kind of genetic modification the farmers have been doing for thousands of, upon thousands of years, the food today is not the same food that we lived on or we grew up on paleolithically. It just isn't going to happen. You're not going to be able to get the, sup the, the dietary factors you need from food. You'd have to eat a bathtub full of sunflower seeds just to get uh, the, the vitamin E that you need for your heart. You'd have to eat 100 oranges just to get the vitamin C you need for your heart. It's not possible. Now, food is definitely the starting point. Supplements supplement. That is, they add to. So you start off with food and then you supplement. You get on your Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients. You make sure you eat correctly. You make sure that you're eating lots of veggies. You make sure you're eating as unprocessed as possible. And then you supplement your diet with a healthy start pack. You supplement your diet with a Beyond Tangy Tangerine, and you will feel better. And you will guaranteed reduce your risks of disease. That's how nutrients work. Nutrients support food. The nutrients themselves are there to support the, the protein and the fats and the carbohydrates that are in food. That's what micronutrients do. There's two kinds of nutrients. You got micronutrients and you got macronutrients. And when we talk about the Mighty 90, we're talking about the micronutrients. The macronutrients, the protein and the fats and the carbs, they provide the energy. The micronutrients help the body use that energy. For the most part, our foods are micronutrient deficient. And at the same time, they're energy dense. And this is why we are the starving obese, because we've got lots of energy, we eat lots of calories, our foods are very energy dense, but they don't have the micronutrients that our bodies need to process that energy. And so we get lots of energy, but not the nutrients we need to process the energy. The body can't use the energy. It stores it as fat, and we end up weak and obese. We're the starving obese. Got uh, one out of every two Americans is overweight or obese, or maybe one out of three Americans is overweight or obese. It's ridiculous. And the fastest way to help your body use all that energy, whether it's the energy in your body in the form of fat or the energy in food, is to make sure you're supplementing your diet with the Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients. You will feel better when you get on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. You will have more energy. You will be able to eat less food. You will be more fat burning and you'll lose weight. Every single marker of good health will improve when you get on the Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients, and that's just the facts. And we're, we're coming to convention time at Longevity. If you're, gonna, uh, if you're in Longevity, I highly encourage you to come out to the convention. I think it starts August 22nd or maybe August 23rd. It's in San Diego. And when you go to the convention, you see people who have changed their lives by getting on the Healthy Start Pack. By changed their lives, and by changed their lives, I mean getting off all their meds. They're not in wheelchairs. They're losing weight by getting on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine and the Ultimate EFAs and the OsteoFX and the Healthy Star Pack and all the other fine longevity products that you could find out all about at criticalhealthnews.com, pharmacistben.com, or brightsideben.com. All right, got one more study here and then we'll, uh, one more article here and then we'll get your phone calls. Low testosterone in men widespread and linked to chronic disease. Males' total testosterone level may be linked 
to more than just sexual health and muscle mass preservation. A new study finds low amounts of the hormone could also be associated with chronic disease, even among men 40 years of age and younger. This is from the journal Scientific Reports. According to Mark Peterson, PhD, lead author of the study, if we look at data for men from a population level, it has become evident over time that chronic disease is on the rise in older men and physically and also in men who are or who are of younger age. They're attributing this to low testosterone levels, and uh, it's pretty common. I, it's one of the most common questions I get via email or, or on the phone is, how can I boost my testosterone? And there's all kinds of supplements you could take to boost your testosterone, formulas you can take. But you know what? One of the fastest ways to boost your testosterone is to stop eating the sugar, stop eating the carbs. Sugar domesticates us. All the carbohydrates that we're indulging in are domesticating. They make us fat and they make us docile. Testosterone is anti-domestication. It's the difference. Testosterone versus uh, the, the carb-rich, energy-dense foods that we eat is like the difference between a lion and a pussycat. If you want to be a lion, stop eating the domesticating foods, mostly the processed foods, and get yourself on a good nutritional supplement program that features protein, number one, especially whey protein, and zinc, number two, selenium, number three, and make sure you do everything you could do to help your body process sugar. That means use your, use your sweeties, your ultimate niacin, as well as selenium, all of which are important for helping the body process sugar. If you're, uh, if you're worried about your testosterone levels, you should know that female hormone, which antagonizes testosterone, is produced in body fat. So yet another reason to lose body fat. We've talked about the importance of body fat as an inflammatory substance. Well, body fat also antagonizes testosterone. So losing body fat is another great strategy for boosting your testosterone levels naturally. All right, 844 is our number. Let's go to the phones and say good morning to Amy in California. I know who you are. Hey, Amy. Amy, Amy. Amy, I'm going to put you back on hold because I don't know what you're trying to tell me here. Um, but we got to take a commercial break anyway. Uh, Amy, call back, uh, stay on hold. We'll get you when we come back from our break, Amy, okay? All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll take a commercial break and come back with your phone calls right after this. On the bright side, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number, and now we shall go to the phones and say good morning to Amy. Are you there, Amy? I am. Thank you for taking my call. Hi, you got to you got to you got to speak into the phone. I'm not sure. Are you out on the street somewhere? No, I'm inside. Can you hear me? Yeah, but it's kind of noisy in the background there. Go ahead. What's going on, Amy? Hey, on uh, when you were mentioning the article on mar- on uh, microwaving when vitamins seem to be better, uh, more increased or something, where did they get that study from? Did they use it? Do you know the background? Did they use uh, supplements that they made in a pharmaceutical? Did they right, say that one more time, uh, Amy? I, I quoted a study where they talked about how vitamins there was less loss of vitamins. Is that what you're talking about right. for microwave? Right. Yeah, the right. whole idea is that when you micro, microwave something, you use less, uh, you, you, you vibrate the molecules for a shorter period of time. Heat vibrates molecules, right? Microwaves right. also vibrate molecules, but microwaves vibrate them much more vigorously, and that's why you don't have to, uh, that's why you, th- it works so much quicker than just heating, because you're, you're vibrating the molecules much more vigorously. So you're achieving heat. You're, you're heating the molecules up in a, in a microwave much more quickly than you are on a stove because you're using energy or, or microwaves to vibrate those molecules. So the vitamins aren't as damaged or you don't lose as much because it doesn't take as, you're not heating them as long. The, the opposite side of the coin is that you're heating them much more vigorously. So, you know, it's kind of like six of one, half dozen of the other. Do you want to, do you want to microwave them for a shorter period of time, but more vigorously, or do you want to heat them for a longer period of time, but less vigorously? So the only thing you're doing with microwaves is you're just vibrating the molecules the same way you do with heat with a stove. It's not really at the molecular level. You're not doing anything different is the bottom line. You hear what I'm saying? At the molecular level with a microwave, you're not doing anything different to the molecule than you're doing with a flame. You're just doing it with more vigor. Well, I, I differ on that, but then if you well, have- no, no, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Don't be brushing that over. Why do you differ on that? 
because all food has some type of fat in it. And we know if you heat fat, it becomes uh, um, toxic. It, it does. It oxidizes. What's that got Why to do you... with the difference? What's that got to do with the difference between microwaving it or heating it or, or using a, f- a stove or a flame? So you go to heat a food, but they have fat in them. So did they do anything about the toxicity of the fat? Listen, in the, in the... listen, you're, I, I don't want to I don't want to go off on a bunch of tangents here. What I'm trying to tell you here, Amy, is at the molecular level, when you shake up the bond with a microwave, you're basically doing the same thing you're doing with a flame, but you're doing it with more vigor, with more energy. That's the that's how a microwave works. It's more energetic. But the process is exactly the same. The molecules are vibrating. The bonds are shaking. Now, it's true if you left it in for the same amount of time as you would on flame, you'd probably get more, more damage, but you don't leave it for the same amount of time. Microwaving is much quicker. Okay. Did you ever read that you, um, acresusa.com? April I don't read 90. anything. I'm going by the mechanism. I don't care what people okay. tell me. I want to know the mechanism. I, all I care about is the how it's working. A microwave works by shaking the molecule. Is that you? You understand that? Does that make sense? I do. I do. Okay. And I, uh, don't, no, let me let, work with me here. Don't. I, I'll let you have your say here in a second. Just work with me. A molecule. Uh, a microwave works by shaking the molecule, right? A flame right. works by shaking the molecule. They both do the same thing. They shake the molecule, but it takes longer with a flame than it does with a microwave. So consequently, you don't need to leave your food in a microwave as long as you need to leave it in a, on a, in a stove or on, on the flame because it's fast, it's more vigorous. It's only a question do- of vigor. Yes, go ahead. Okay, two comments on that. So then what do we do with the radiation we're sending out to the world? And oh, that's a different food? story. I'm not, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about what it does to the food. Yes, that's true. There yeah. is microwave radiation that's going out in the world, but our whole world is filled with microwaves. Everywhere you, you, can't, go into, you can't go through a revolving uh, a door in a supermarket or, or stand next to a cash register with the with a, with a little beeper thing, with a barcode scanner, without subjecting yourself to that kind of energy, and that's all over the planet. That's true. But as far as the food itself goes, you're only dealing with a question of vigor. And the fact that you can leave a micro, a food in a microwave sh- for a shorter period of time means that, um, means that you don't have to expose your, your nutrients to that much of, to, to as long a period of, dis- of, of disturbances. Now, the flip side is, is it's more vigorous. That's true. But the studies that I've read show that it, you, you actually conserve nutrients when you microwave. You know, it's, it's, if you, some, I'm open to hearing a logical explanation. I'm not dead set on this, but I just don't hear a mechanism why a microwave is worse, with the exception of the fact that it's more vigorous than regular heat. I just don't see the science behind it, and well, I'm open-minded what, about it. Somebody can tell me. Uh, that's why I said go to the www.acresusa.com April '94 uh, issue, and it gives you all the real facts about how microwaves are not conducive for human health. Okay, so this me, is what I'd like you to do, Amy, because you're a smart gal. Okay, I I like you to look that up yourself, and you see if there's a, a a special mechanism that microwaves have aside from shaking the molecule up just like a fire does, just like an oven or a stove does, if there's some kind of unique mechanism that microwaves have for shaking that molecule up that creates damage to the molecules, uh, the vitamin molecules, the nutrient molecules, that is above and beyond the damage that a a stove would do or an ordinary fire would do. Uh, Yeah, and I get where you're coming from, and I do appreciate that. But my concern is all food has fat in it. So once we damage fat, the brain will... Yeah, if you heat fat on a stove, that's going to damage it. That's why you don't want to heat your oils. Yeah, so why would we increase our, um, by radiating food with a microwave to kill the fat that's going to be toxic in our body, and then we pay the price. We get a speeding ticket in the right, body. Well, now, you're, you're, now, you're, now you're off. You're, now you're talking a little bit gibberish here, okay? First of all, everything's okay. radiation. Heat is radiation. Microwave is radiation. That's just a word that means something's radiating. So when you, say, when you throw out words like that, you're, you're starting to enter into the realm of gibberish. All I'm telling you here, Amy, is that a microwave is only works more vigorously and intensely than a flame. It's not a completely separate mechanism. Fats are damaged in a microwave. They're damaged with a stove. They're damaged with a cigarette lighter. If you took a, if you took a, a, fatty, a, a fatty peanut and lit it with a cigarette lighter, you would damage the fats. 
All right, so it's not like a microwave is doing anything different. Anyway, I got to go. And it sounds like you're vested in this opinion, and I'm happy to hear. I'm happy to listen to you if you have something like scientific there that, that can distinguish why a microwave is different from a flame, aside from the strength and the intensity. And some people will tell you that it's so intense, it's so massively intense that that's where it creates a problem. And I, I just am not convinced of that. Although I am open-minded, and I'm willing to hear somebody. If you have an explanation, I'm willing to hear hear about it. Reading, but this, reading that article, USA. AcresUSA.com, April 94 issue will show you the facts. It's such, you know, it's such great information. But, uh, you know, I'm at peace. It's great. Thank you, Ben. I appreciate it. Thank you. AcresUSA, did you say? Um, AcresUSA.com, April 1994 issue. I'm going to look that up. As soon as I get off the air today, I'll look that up. Thank you, Amy. Take care. All right. All right. Let's go to Rick in Illinois. Good morning, Rick. Uh, Good morning, Ben. Thanks for taking my call. Um, I'm investigating a new business startup, which is house washing, and it is done by using a pressure washer and spraying some type of a detergent or cleaner up against the house siding to remove uh, built-up algae, dirt, and other contaminants and so forth that that, that uh, get on get on a home siding over time. Um, the, this is done again with a commercial pressure washer, and uh, the prescribed method for doing this, the consensus, and, and the only effective way to really do this uh, industry-wide right now is done, and is done by most people, is to spray bleach um, um, through their pressure washer through a chemi- using a chemical inject with a pressure washer against the home to uh, help to, to, to loosen the algae and then rinse it off. I'm concerned about that because of the health uh, 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 the health concerns of doing that and doing that for four to six hours a day, four to five days a week for six. Is it months chlorine months. bleach? Is it a chlorine um, bleach? Well, it, it's uh, it would be uh, uh, what I would use would be uh, about six point nine or seven percent sodium hypochlorite with about okay. point one to one percent sodium hydroxide. So okay. my concern is when you're spraying this up against the side of a house, um, and once this Bleach has been sprayed out, and, and, and with the pressure washer that I have, it's a 20 to 1 ratio. So for every gallon of bleach that's coming through the pressure washer, one, 20 gallons of water is going with it as well, 20 to 1 ratio. So, 20 to 1 water to bleach. Correct. So Okay, and you're, so talking, you about chlorine, bl- you're talking about chlorine-based bleach. Yes, yes. There's a, okay. a brand name you're familiar with, and then they have a, 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 a labeled brand that's used specifically for house siding and cleaning. So what I got I got about a minute what's your question here Well you know what's the long term health effects to me if, if any from spraying this up against a house and maybe breathing in these these mist droplets Probably not you know it's hard to say it's not probably not great if it's chlorine it's chlorine is chlorine I mean but you're drinking chlorine when you drink tap water mm-hmm. it's probably not great Okay. Um, I, I'd have to see more about the about the product. Why don't you send me an email, Ben at KSCO dot com, and send me some some of the, uh, the the literature on the product exact product you're using. I give you better information. We'll do. Okay, buddy. Thank you so Thank much, you. Rick. Bye, Bye. man. Bye. All right, that's all the time we have for today on Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. Don't forget, we got free shipping at TruthTreatments.com, TruthTreatments.com for the next seven hours. We will talk to y'all later, folks. Bye for now. 